The 1980s saw a darker turn to science fiction, and the arrival of a new subgenre, cyberpunk. Seen by some critics as the failure to carry on with the radical nature of the new wave. The term cyberpunk was first coined by Bruce Bethke from his 1983 story of the same name. Cyberpunk's writers included the likes of William Gibson, Bruce Sterling, and Rudy Rucker, to name but a few. Although they acknowledged the influence and development of cyberpunk from the Ballardian literature of the 60s and 70s, this subgenre was also a failure to realise the ideals and aspirations of the new wave. As much as the literature of cyberpunk looked to the inner space as advocated by Ballard and the new wave, it failed to turn its back on the highfalutin techno babble that was so prevalent during the golden age. Fundamental to cyberpunk are the concepts of virtual reality and cybernetics, ideas not altogether new to science fiction in the early 80s. Cybernetics had been a mainstay of science fiction for many years, although the concept of virtual reality was novel at the time. Cyberpunk was a synthesis of the punk movement, which appeared in late 1970s Britain, and the emergence of the home computing culture, which would ultimately culminate with the arrival of Tim Berners-Lee's World Wide Web in 1991. Cyberpunk as a term started to come into popular use with the arrival of William Gibson's novel Neuromancer and Ridley Scott's movie Blade Runner, an adaptation of the Philip K. Dick story Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? In the United Kingdom, cyberpunk had visually been a part of Judge Dredd's Mega City 1 from the late 70s onwards, and the genre managed to permeate into the pop music world with bands like Sig Sig Sputnik. Cyberpunk did not look particularly far forward as science fiction sometimes tends to do. In the culmination of the mass media culture created by the launching of the World Wide Web on the internet, it seemed that cyberpunk's visions would not be realised. Cyberpunk is still very much a part of science fiction today, though there has been a decline in literary productivity. In cinema, the genre has been represented most famously by movies such as the Wachowski siblings' The Matrix trilogy, and films such as Nemesis, Johnny Mnemonic, and Virtuosity. It is within the medium of the anime and manga worlds that cyberpunk continues to thrive and flourish today. Some of the most startling and original work including Otomo Katsuhira's Akira, and Shiro Masamuni's Ghost in the Shell which was made into the phenomenal animated film directed by Oshi Mamoru in 1995. The 1980s saw a number of developments for science fiction. Fandom was on the rise, and we saw the arrival of the home video and computer game markets. The sudden optimism of the late 1970s was very much briefly lived, and as we entered the 80s, science fiction seemed finally to grow up a bit. The big four were still publishing and selling books, though the 80s would see the passing of Frank Herbert in 1986 and Robert Heinlein in 1988. Asimov, Herbert and Clark continued to publish their Foundation, Dune and Space Odyssey series respectively, whilst Heinlein churned out a few notable works. Influenced heavily by these writers, the 80s saw the arrival of a series of epic science fiction works that would seem to inherit the sensibilities desired by the new wave, whilst exploring and revisiting many of the tropes from the Golden Age. The first series of note is Gene Wolfe's The Book of the New Sun, an epic story initially published as four novels between 1980 and 1983. This tetralogy begins with The Shadow of the Torture, published in 1980, The Claw of the Conciliator in 1981, the Sword of the Lictor in 1982, and The Citadel of the Autark in 1983. The novels are the beginning of a series of works by Wolf set in the same fictional universe, and are collectively known as the Solar Cycle. Part of the Dying Earth subgenre of science fiction, Wolf's The Book of the New Sun follows the story of Severian, an apprentice torturer. Set in a nation known as the Commonwealth, which is ruled by an individual known as the Autark, Wolf's work has heavy religious overtones based on his Catholic faith. The Book of the New Sun at a casual read may be mistaken for a fantasy series, but upon closer inspection, and despite having the trappings of some fantasy literature, 
is very much a science fiction work. Told in the first person by Severian, an unreliable narrator, for the reader there is a particular immersion in the language of the far future that is anchored firmly in the past. Complicated yet straightforward, the Book of the New Sun requires some work from the reader, and its wonderful prose, characterization, a mythopoeia, have established it as a literary masterpiece. The bar had been raised for science fiction writers, with Ursula K. Le Guin calling it a masterpiece, totally original, new, incomparable, the beginning of something great. Harlan Ellison, upon reviewing The Shadow of the Torture, had this to say about Wolfe's writing. Gene Wolfe is engaged in the holy chore of writing every other author under the table. He is no less than one of the finest, most original writers in the world today. His work is singular, hypnotising, startling above comparison. The shadow of the torturer breaks new ground in American literature and, as the first novel of a tetralogy, casts a fierce light on what will certainly be a lodestone landmark. The Earth of the New Sun, published in 1987, would provide a coda for the story. Wolfe's work is important in its recognition by other science fiction writers and critics, and his intelligent and engaging storytelling was a pleasant wake-up call for many aspiring writers of genre fiction. Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game was published in 1985 and would mark the beginning of another well-written epic series. Again with the Ender Saga, we have an exploration of a number of ideas framed within a space opera backdrop, and, like Wolfe's Book of the New Sun, the work has a number of religious explorations based on the author's own faith. In this case, Card is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Developed out of the short story of the same name published in 1977, Ender's Game has a revised publication in 1991, updating it to better reflect the current political climate. Ender's Game tells the story of Ender Wigan, one of three children who is chosen to attend battle school. The story follows Ender and a number of child soldiers as they are trained to fight in a genocidal war with an insect race known as the Formix, and who are derogatorily called the Buggers. Ender's Game, and its first sequel, Speaker for the Dead, which was also revised for publication in 1991, both won the prestigious Hugo and Nebula Awards. The later books take a more philosophical approach than the first novel, and the original series includes Xenocide and Children of the Mind, sometimes called the Ender Quartet. A War of Gifts, an Ender story, published in 2007, and Ender in Exile, published in 2008, have since added to the original saga. The publication runs from the mid-80s and continues to the present day. The late 1980s would also see the arrival of two writers that would come to dominate science fiction throughout the end of the 20th century and into the new millennium. The first of these writers is Dan Simmons, award-winning American science fiction, fantasy and horror writer. Dan Simmons's Hyperion Cantos are a stunning, complicated and intelligent mix of hard and soft science fiction, mythopoeia and clever storytelling. Framed initially as a series of tales told by pilgrims on their way to the world of Hyperion, as a work it is similar in mode to Chaucer's Canterbury Tales and Boccaccio's Decameron. The Hyperion Cantos began with the publication of the first of four novels, the Hugo award-winning Hyperion, in 1989. Steeped in mythology, religion, intertextuality and philosophy, Hyperion is notable for the introduction of one of literature's greatest monsters, the extremely dangerous and very intriguing Shrike. Simmons's writing is superb, in particular his characterization and world building set in the 29th century. The use of the overall frame story to bring in the individual tales of the pilgrims makes the reader yearn for more, and allows the overall story to play with style and technique. The story continues with the fall of Hyperion in 1990, Endymion in 1996, and concluded with Rise of Endymion, published in 1997. 
Dan Simmons' work is steeped in literary intertextuality, and his other notable science fiction works going into the new century include Ilium in 2003 and Olympus in 2005, which explore a recreation of the Trojan War on Mars. Scottish writer Ian Banks had put himself well on the literary map in the mid-1980s, with the publication of his very successful first novel, The Wasp Factory, in 1984. Walking on Glass, The Bridge and Espadare Street soon followed, but in 1987, and under the name Ian M. Banks, his critically acclaimed and very popular culture novels would begin to hit the bookshelves. The first of these was a sprawling and intelligent space opera called Consider Flebas, published in 1987, and was soon followed in 1988 with The Player of Games. The culture novel's publication would span four decades, with Use of Weapons, The State of the Art, Accession, and Inversions, all published in the 90s. Look to Windward, published in 2000, acted as a kind of sequel to Consider Flebas, and was followed by Matter in 2008, Surface Detail in 2010, and The Hydrogen Sonata in 2012. Ian M. Banks sadly passed away in 2013. The Culture series is arguably the benchmark that has been set for good science fiction in the new century and the new millennium. Not just good science fiction, but if it has to be spelt out, excellent literature. The culture novels are a heady combination of intelligence, wit, vulgarity, excitement, and altogether mind-blowing action, set in a very believable and possibly desirable universe. These books are very fun to read, and if there is possibly one thing that Ian M. Banks knew how to do superbly, and maybe better than any other modern writer, was to command the pace of his stories. There is a sense of immediate acceleration when reading the culture books, particularly when the action starts. It's akin to taking a roller coaster ride, expecting to have a wild twist or turn here and there, only to find yourself flying off a cliff and accelerating faster and faster into an abyssal chasm that seems to never end. The culture is a social anarchic extropian meta species that includes machine intelligence. Their society is made up primarily of humanoids and artificial intelligences known as minds, which occupy machinery such as drones and ships, as well as habitats and orbitals. To Banks, the culture was to represent an optimistic look at humanity's possible future, with science fiction in the 80s being populated with a great deal of negative futures, particularly with the arrival of cyberpunk. The majority of the culture series focus on the actions of two groups within this post-scarcity civilization, contact and special circumstances. Absolutely massive in scope, Banks had taken the trappings of the old golden age and kicked them into a very different future, devoid of the capitalist yearnings of the Edisonian hero. The culture series is high-octane literature at its finest, an unforgettable universe populated with long-lived humans who can change gender and even species, as well as the strange ships and mines with hilarious and sometimes obscure names. The culture novel's true impact on science fiction is not just their incredibly well-crafted writing and humour, or the rich universe created therein, but the optimism that runs through the range of its stories. Like H.G. Wells's Martians in The War of the Worlds, Banks's culture represents a possible future for mankind. We could be the culture one day. The 90s would also see the arrival of Kim Stanley Robinson's Mars Trilogy, with the publication of the Nebula Award-winning Red Mars in 1992, and the Hugo Award-winning Green Mars in 1993, and Blue Mars in 1996. This important science fiction trilogy again is epic in scale, and has quite a hard science fiction element to it. It explores the terraforming of Mars over centuries, while looking at the effects of overpopulation and pollution on Earth. The resurgence of the space opera owes much to the development of science fiction outside of the literary world, especially through formats such as television, cinema, and other mass media. 
advancement in special effects and other related technologies heralded a change in television from the mainstay episodic shows such as the Star Trek franchises of the 80s and 90s to a more common trend of big epic science fiction series such as Babylon 5 from 1994 to 1998, Farscape from 1999 to 2003, and the recently reimagined Battlestar Galactica from 2004 to 2009. These shows feature protracted story arcs told over several years, are epic in scope, and feature many traits of both the space opera and the soap opera. Moving into the 2000s and up to today, Space opera still seems to dominate the field, though quality is fading in place of quantity. All of the big four are still selling books, though now all posthumously, with the passing of Isaac Asimov in 1992 and the more recent death of Arthur C. Clarke in 2008. Science fiction still would seem to be in safe hands. Notable amongst modern writers in the field is Alistair Reynolds with the publication of his Revelation Space Novels, and Anne Leckie with her Imperial Raj series, the first of which, Ancillary Justice, published in 2013, became the first novel to win the Hugo, Nebula and Arthur C. Clarke Awards. Modern science fiction as a body of ideas now exists in so many forms that it has to a degree grown up and diversified. There are science fiction novels, short stories, games, conventions, comics, TV shows, movies, radio plays and dramas, tragedies, comedies, poems, religions, and even some academic work. Science fiction is a playground for writers from all around the world, in a new century where old barriers have fallen and new walls have arisen. Science fiction is a locus for ideas, not all of them great, but these ideas are often forward thinking and pushing the need for understanding and change. As we move forward into the 21st century, science fiction is still not altogether taken seriously as a body of literature, seldom taught in schools, colleges or universities. With the advent of online streaming and the forming of media mega corporations, there is a new demand to buy up science fiction stories and present them for mass consumption. This is because of the already existing saturation of fantasy, superhero and horror shows within the new media landscape, and in the desire for new content, it seems most of these corporations are turning their eye towards classic science fiction literature for adaptation in a new media environment that has very few fresh or original ideas. Reboots and unnecessary reimaginings are plentiful in cinema and television, and there is a great deal of nostalgia towards older original science fiction. As we begin the third decade of the 21st century, it seems that nostalgia for old fashioned science fiction and the desire for reimagining older works to suit the current political and cultural climate are clashing. Corporate greed and the streaming explosion have brought a dilution to many forms of literature not just science fiction, bought up, copyrighted to the hilt and adapted for the screen to varying degrees of success, this is not always a good process for the source material. As much as there are new writers, the new ideas are not plentiful and science fiction is changing and evolving as it should. But there is a malaise out there and it is not in science fiction literature itself rather in the current miasmic zeitgeist that we find ourselves in. Science fiction has been warning us about the nature of our peril for a number of years now. As a body of literature and a body of ideas, it asks us who we really are, and wonders what if. But science fiction also asked another question, an old question that the Roman Empire asked, Quo Vadis? Where are we going? <laughs>